What if events had unfolded differently in Spider-Man Far From Home? What if Tony Stark survived an Avengers Endgame, leading to him being involved in Spider-Man Far From Home? How would this impact the MCU timeline as a whole? We are going to be continuing this Marvel's What If, if what if Tony Stark lived in Avengers Endgame? This is part two, so do make sure to check out part one as it is a very important part going forward. That being said, if you guys do enjoy these series, do make sure to subscribe, like, share, and support the channel down below. But that being said, let's continue the Marvel's What If. Just like the original MCU timeline, Midtown School of Science and Technology completes its year, which was restarted to accommodate the students who previously blipped five years earlier from the Mad Titans actions on Wakanda. A lot of the students came back who were aged and some who were not aged. This resulted in the students having to finish their last year of high school. The school organized organizes a two-week summer trip to Europe where Peter Parker is now training with Steve Rogers on the side to become a better Avenger. After not receiving phone calls, Parker still felt bad after the events of the Mad Titan. Sometimes he thought to himself maybe he could have snapped with his spider powers it wouldn't have messed him up. While still being in school and now a member of the Avengers, Peter's social life was continuing. He planned to reveal to MJ his attraction towards her, but because of the elementals in Mexico, Parker was forced to go to Europe but as Spider-Man. While in Europe, Steve Rogers phoned Peter to inform him that they are needed and Fury is asking for him. Peter this time agreed to meet with Nick Fury due to Rogers' request. Parker met with Nick Fury in a vehicle in Italy where Peter goes with his class. Peter leaves his class swinging as Spider-Man. Fury meets Spider-Man on a building rooftop where Peter in this universe gets Edith early. Fury reveals to Peter that Stark is a broken man now. Parker was shocked to hear it but knew it was true. Nick told Peter how he was becoming an alcoholic and how he's been working towards a secret project. Peter felt let down to see how his old mentor has fallen so far and so fast. But nevertheless, Parker thanked him for the glasses and asked him why now. Fury said that just in case anything happens to Stark, his successor would be worthy to have the glasses. Peter asked if Tony was okay with this, where Fury didn't reply. He told Spider-Man to come with him. Since Parker met with Fury earlier in the timeline, the events of the Elementals and Vincent in Italy have haven't happened yet. Peter and Fury walked into an underground facility in Italy. It was dark and his shadow was being casted with each passing moment. Parker could see people talking in the distance where he saw Steve Rogers and Mysterio talking. Mysterio was the new hero on the news. Parker was shocked to see the big fishbowl type mask on him. His voice was distorted and Mysterio claims to Captain America and Spider-Man that he is from another reality that had similar heroes just like this one. He explained that the elementals in New Mexico was part of his reality and that the creatures have destroyed his world, but with their help, they might be able to stop the impending doom the elementals bring. While they begin talking, Peter's classmates have been out partying during the summer trip. While they were having fun, a massive storm had happened. A giant water elemental was unleashed on the city. Fury told Mysterio, Cap, and Spider-Man that he had just emerged from the water and started attacking people. Spider-Man told them his friends were in danger. Having a suit this time, the three decided to pursue the elemental. A massive water creature attacked people and started smashing buildings. At the same time, Tony Stark was listening to music while building and upgrading his armor. His music was cut from a breaking news story that explained another elemental had emerged in Italy. Destroying and killing people, the news said that Spider-Man had been badly injured by the water creature. Stark stopped everything. He knew that he was needed before it was too late. Still having nightmares of the future, Stark knew that the kid needed his help. Half drunk, Stark slowly got into his superior MK1 suit before blasting off. While Captain America tried fighting the elemental, he was thrown into the water where Spider-Man tried to save him. The two were drowning below while Mysterio tried stopping the creature with his powers before a bright light emerged coming close 
closer. Mysterio was hit from behind by the water before a man standing in the night sky hovered above the water creature before a massive blast from his chest hit the elemental. Fury smiled, watching from afar as it was revealed to be none other than Iron Man. Spider-Man would save Captain America, who then saved Ned and MJ from the elemental. Stark easily put down the creature, and the water elemental started fading away as more Stark beams hit it. Rogers was surprised to see Tony back in action this early. Spider-Man swung up, landing on the bridge, seeing Stark easily defeat the creature. As Parker tried to get Tony's attention, Iron Man looked at him. Seeing Spider-Man in a new black and red suit, he was going to talk with him. Peter said Mr. Stark before Tony flew away. Cap told Peter not to worry about it and Tony was going through something, but he said that he still cared as he came in stopping the creature. Tony came home, flying home drunk, before Pepper walked outside screaming at him, saying that he's become irresponsible and that they have a kid. Tony yelled at Pepper to leave him alone and the nightmare started haunting him again. Tony stumbled into the kitchen before passing out in front of Morgan, who started crying. Pepper took Morgan before driving away, leaving Tony broken in his home. He thought that maybe he should have died while Tony went into a mental breakdown. Spider-Man, Mysterio, and Captain America plotted to take down the last elemental, where Mysterio claimed was in Prague. Rogers told Peter that they needed to go there immediately to stop this. After Peter saw and heard what happened to Tony, he declined there to offer. He told Cap that his friends were in danger and that they needed his help. After Thanos and now Stark, he just needed a break to himself. He wanted wanted to continue the vacation. Rogers, realizing that Peter is still a kid, and because of this, maybe this isn't his line of work. Maybe he was becoming exhausted. He was still a kid after all. Fury secretly changes the class's trajectory to divert the students to Prague. Steve told Fury not to do it, but because Spider-Man was going to be a key Avenger, Fury told Rogers a little experience wouldn't hurt. They discussed Tony. Rogers told Fury that he should check up on him once this problem is solved. Nick agreed while they kept working with Mysterio. As Peter continued his class trip like the original timeline, he learned to use Edith more, but after some time, the class trip was diverted. Parker saw as they were going to Prague, the fire elemental was attacking the classmates. Parker dodged the fire attacks with Mysterio and Captain America, where they were able to stop it. Mysterio thanked Captain America and Spider-Man for assisting him and stopping the final creature, Molten Man. Fury was happy to hear it and asked the three to form a new superhero team in Berlin later. Fury asked Spider-Man that he still needs to step up, asking if he wants to live up to the next Iron Man. Rogers told Fury to stop before they got into a heated argument. Spider-Man told them to stop fighting and Steve told Spider-Man that today is his day and that he deserves the rest of the day off, not only saving all of his friends, but helping Mysterio take down the elementals. Fury along with Captain America would leave Spider-Man and Mysterio after the battle. They went to the bar to discuss themselves. Parker was shocked to see Mysterio removing his mask. He told Parker he was just a regular guy like him. The two talked about themselves and Peter was sorry to hear that Quentin Beck's family was killed. Mysterio said that he could start a new family in this universe and Peter was happy to hear it. As the two talked about their battles, Beck asked Peter what he wants to do in life, or Peter said he just wants to go back on his trip. He told him that he was thankful for Steve Rogers helping him train more, but after taking up this big mantle, with now Iron Man being retired, it seems like a big responsibility. Beck then was curious about Tony's relationship with Peter, asking him how they became friends. Parker told him that he was recruited when the Avengers had a civil war among themselves that led to them fighting and then fighting Thanos. After the battle was over, Peter said Tony became a new person, someone that he didn't recognize even after fighting the water monster. Stark looked ill. Peter didn't know if he could be the next Iron Man. At the same time, a woman walked towards Peter, who gave Peter Edith. Mysterio laughed, saying that the glasses don't look good on him. Parker was shocked to hear 
hear it, but knew that it was a joke. He thought that maybe he could give Mysterio the glasses. That way there, he could continue just being Spider-Man. Although he liked them, it was too much for Parker. Mysterio told Pete if he was certain he wanted to give them up. After Peter witnessed Beck's actions after taking down the Elementals, he agreed to give them up. He was more experienced, and he was a more experienced fighter anyways. Quentin smiled before taking them. Parker gave control to him before thanking Mysterio for helping him through his training with Captain America to becoming an Avenger. Parker left Beck at the bar. Going back to the field trip, at the same time, Beck celebrated alongside ex-Stark Industries workers. Beck, who was fired from his position as Stark's holographic illusion specialist for his unstable nature, used advanced projections to simulate his power and the elementals, and now with Edith's orbital weaponized drones to increase the scale of his illusions, he can establish himself as an Avenger or the new main leader of the Avengers. There was still one last thing Beck needed to do. Take out Tony Stark. The ex-Stark Industries employees came up with a plan that would lure Tony Stark to becoming the famous Iron Man once again, and the team started working. At the same time, Parker learned that MJ knew that he was Spider-Man. They discovered a machine. After getting into an argument if he was Spider-Man, the machine showed a projection that showcased Mysterio fighting all of the elementals. Parker was shocked, but knew that there was no time. He made a mistake by giving Edith to him. While the events of Spider-Man Far From Home almost play out the same, with Nick Fury meeting Spider-Man in Berlin, Parker told Steve Rogers about Beck's doings. Tony Stark kept building machines and new armor at his house, hearing on the news that Spider-Man was appearing in Berlin. Tony was shocked to hear it. He was half drunk and decided to ignore the issue. While this happened, Edith showed Beck where Stark was living. While it was a secure place, it was exposed after Parker gave him the glasses. Hacking into Tony Stark's security, his master plan had worked. The team of ex-Stark workers planted drones everywhere around Stark's house that were rigged to explode. Tony looked at his phone, music blasting, working on his suit. He saw that Steve Rogers was trying to reach him. Steve was told the truth about Beck and how he used to work for Tony Stark, and now he was seeking revenge for what he did to him. Steve Rogers kept phoning Tony, but he soon realized that he was too late. Mysterio's bomb went off near Stark's house. The bomb wiped out the entire house. Tony heard screaming. At the same time, Parker confronted Beck, alone, but his illusions were too powerful, almost killing Spider-Man in the process after Parker was hit by a train telling Beck about his friends and how they knew he was Spider-Man. Beck promised that he would take care of them, like how he took care of Stark and his family. Peter tried to phone Happy Hogan, who was unavailable due to Stark's family. Tony ran up the stairs earlier, but he was already too late. Worrying so much to save his friends and family, Tony was too distracted. He saw Morgan lying on the floor beside Pepper. Holding them tight, Tony screamed. Tony cried and he heard a breaking news story that played on the TV, showing the Battle of London. Steve Rogers gave a speech to Peter that would keep him motivated. He went to London with Captain America in a private Avengers jet. Rogers told Peter that there was nothing nobody could have done. Parker asked if he got a hold of Tony, but Rogers put his head down in disappointment. There was no time. Parker and Rogers skydived off of the Avengers Quinjet into London. Just as Beck launched his assault with, with the Elemental Fusion, combining the properties of the previous Elementals, at the same time, at Stark's house, the Battle of London had begun. The news told the world the Avengers have come to stop the Elemental Fusion, with Spider-Man and Captain America on foot. Stark's door opened and Happy ran into the house, calling for Tony, who was with Rhodes. The two saw Stark crying in his living room floor, with two bodies in his hands. Happy Hogan replayed a message from Tony Stark's suit, who revealed who planted the bombs. It was Beck, a former worker, Quentin Beck. He showed Stark the message that Rogers left earlier. Rhodes got Tony out of his house, where the police, fire, and ambulance showed up. Tony watched, motionless, as his family was being put into an ambulance, where they were declared dead in front of him, all because of an ex-Stark employee named Mysterio. Stark knew who the killer was, and 
ended up and decided to go after him. Tony checked his phone. He had hundreds of messages from Peter Parker telling Tony that Beck was evil and how everything was fake. Friday revealed that some of Stark's systems were hacked from Edith. Tony snapped. Edith was in the hands of a murderer, and Parker was the one to give it away, leading to his family being killed. He couldn't take any more of this. It was as if it all hit Stark now. Because of old Tony's downfall after losing his arm and snapping away Thanos and his armies, he stopped taking responsibility. He blamed himself for everything. The world needed Iron Man and he stood by, letting the chaos just unfold. Gliding over, making their way into the illusion, Parker and Rogers battled swarms of Mysterio's drones. Destroying the elemental fusion illusion, Beck reordered the drones to then attack Spider-Man and Captain America. It exhausted Parker to use all of his web fluid. Meanwhile, during the attack on London, Rogers went to rescue Parker's friends, but as the drones were nearing them in, he had to take them into a secure place, and the only one nearby was the vault of the Royal Crown Jewels. Inside, Parker's friends opened up with Captain America, but Parker used an improvised tactic that blew a hole through the drone's defenses, and he reached Mysterio. While Mysterio fought briefly with Spider-Man, trying to trick him again with his drones, Parker dodged most of the drones before a bright light came in. Captain America watched from afar as he dodged more drone attacks. They saw Iron Man appear before them with an army of six Iron Legions. Giving Spider-Man the advantage, he used his webs while Mysterio was distracted before knocking him to the ground. Beck was caught by one of the drones where Spider-Man saw Beck get shot by a repulsor beam. Spider-Man thanked Tony for helping him. As Tony ignored him, he walked towards Beck. It was already too late. Spider-Man took the glasses as he was ready to shut down the drones, but Tony pointed his hand at Spider-Man to surrender the glasses to him. Peter gave them as Stark called off the attacks before shooting back in the face, killing him for good. The brutality confused Peter. Iron Man wasn't this ruthless. Tony looked into Peter's eyes. He told Peter what happened and that Mysterio killed his family. Steve Rogers managed to get to the top of the bridge where he met with Stark and Parker. The three of them stood as Beck's body laid there motionless. Rogers said that he was sorry for what happened. Tony told him not to be sorry and that it was his own fault for not being powerful enough. Tony said, maybe we shouldn't have gotten rid of the Infinity Stones. Rogers looked into the soulless eyes of Tony Stark, who flew away. Peter was silent and he took his mask off, asking what do they do with Tony? Rogers said that even he didn't know what the next course of action was going to be. After the death of Tony's family and Beck, Spider-Man swung through the city. The Avengers united and agreed that they would be working closely with new heroes to stop threats like London from ever happening again. While at the same time, the Daily Bugle came out and gave their condolences for the Stark family, who was killed by Mysterio. The signal went out and showed Tony Stark. Everybody was silent and confused. He told the world that now the time is here for Iron Man to spread fear. He told the world that after a long thought, everyone turned their heads away. He knew that the world needed saving from another Thanos threat. He told the world that he was building more weapons than ever before, and told any criminal that his Iron Legions would arrest them and vowed that no one will ever lose a family member or friend from crime again. He stated that Stark Industries will work together to put a suit of armor around the galaxy. Spider-Man was shocked to hear it, but knew that things were getting serious. Then that is going to be, what if Iron Man had been in Spider-Man Far From Home? And what if Tony Stark had lived in Avengers Endgame? If you guys did enjoy part 2, do make sure to subscribe for part 3 as I will be doing it. And make sure to turn your notifications on and like the video so you guys are all up to date with latest content. Things are getting crazy, we are now going to be entering Spider-Man No Way Home with Tony Stark. With that being said, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.